Welcome back to the channel. Today we've got a little package from Avion Studios. So let's get this open and see what we've got. This is exciting. So this is a DLX Retro Flyer preamp. And this is a suitcase version of the Retro Flyer. When playing my Fender Woods, I tend to use the signal straight from the harp. I do have a Peterson preamp and I do enjoy the extra features of it such as turning the bass way up till it growls or turning the tremolo to full depth and going from super slow to insanely fast but it doesn't shine like the full dry signal does so just a heads up this is not going to be a review of this preamp I'm only just going to install it to review it I really need to play with it for a while get to know it know all the features inside and out and give it a fair critique and I'm not there yet so far the components look really well made, the first plate catches elements of the original design and it should look at home on the front of a Fender Rhodes piano. So let's have a look at the bag of goodies. We've got a nice selection of connectors and wires that are all pre-assembled. This looks like it's going to be quite an easy install. The jacks look to be of good quality and I should know I've definitely bought a few poor quality jacks in my time. But these look like they've got a chance of lasting for another 50 years, which is great. The RCA jack looks really nice, gold plated, so it's not going to corrode, it's going to be a low resistance connection, and this alone is going to be much better than the standard RCA jack that's on many pianos, so this is going to be good. So next we've got the controls, once more these seem well made, they do the job well, and they've gone for like an indicator dot, looks very stylish to me. One real bonus that I notice here is that it also includes the tools to install this, there's nothing worse than getting something and finding out you need a hex key that's popular on the other side of the planet. So I do enjoy this, I enjoy this a lot. So this is my suitcase piano. I've bought a replacement name rail for it as the original one had extra holes splitting out the DIN4 connection of the Peterson preamp. The name rail already has hole drills for both the suitcase and the stage model, so no mods are required there. The harp cover just comes straight off and next we need to remove these four screws that hold on the name rail. Removing these screws allows us access to the rail and we can clean it up and we can freely work on and install the, the preamp. Next we need to unplug the RCA cable. This one really has seen better days. So now we remove the controls. It's nice that the tools provided also work on this. I did need a socket or a spanner to loosen and tighten the nuts that hold the pots in place. When making any change to a vintage instrument, I always like to make sure that it's reversible, so I'll carefully remove these controls, bag them up and store them in the lid, so that if required, I can remove the preamp and go back to the stock setup. It's probably never going to happen, but it's good to have that as an option. Next, the nuts on the potentiometers need removing. If you're not used to working with tools, it might be a good idea to tape the first plate just to ensure no accidental scratching. And make sure you've got a clean and clear workplace just so that you've got space to put these washers and um, nuts. And then once they're removed, we can put them back onto the pots so they don't get mixed up or lost. Removing the old nameplate can be a little bit tricky, but try not to damage the rail or plate. This glue's been working for 50 years or so, but a bit of work and persistence will get the job done. I'm using a metal scraper, but carefully using it so that the sharp side's not gonna scratch anything. And then while we've got the name rail clean, it's a great time to try and clean it up. And we'll get rid of all the gluey residue and we'll get this sparkling like it should be once it's put back together. Once all cleaned up, we can stick on the new first plate. I'll give this a few dry fit ups before exposing the glue to get an idea of how it should sit on the front. So the next part is one of the most complex parts of this install and that's where we have to remove a connector from one of these wires, feed the wires through the first plate and then reattach the wires. Apologies about my arm blocking the view here. As I said, this is the most complex bit. Make sure you follow the and check the instructions provided. This video is not instructions, it's just an indication of how easy or hard it is to upgrade your piano with a new preamp. The version of your preamp might be very different, so beware. 
This mini screwdriver is an absolute workhorse. So next we need to fit the main board of the preamp. This has got a large RF shield, so we can't see too much about taking it to part. But it's good to see such a big shield and hopefully that keeps the noise to a minimum. This whole thing attaches with the potentiometer nuts on the front. Large washers here to help spread the load. And it's starting to show what it's going to look like once it's assembled. One thing I do like about this design is it has double pots for all three controls, giving the maximum number of options to the user, while not changing the aesthetics of the piano. From a distance to a casual viewer, this will look no different to a standard suitcase preamp. We can now attach the wires for the send and return of the DIN4 socket. One thing is I've mixed up the send and return in this video, but I do correct that later on. So once more, follow the instructions. The outer controls have a small grub screw and the inner one just pushes on. They need to be aligned with the shaft, but once aligned to push on and they feel pretty solid. So let's get this built back up. Name rail back on. RCA jack back in. Screws back in and harp cover on. So overall this has been a very easy install. I'd imagine that other preamps probably installed just as easily. It is a good bonus that it includes the rarer tools in the kit, though you will need a screwdriver and a socket for the pots. But yeah, it does look fantastic. So obviously you want to know how this sounds, so subscribe and that'll come up soon.